All right, everybody, got an exciting one today. Finally going to do the final assembly of my Grazon G20 uh, new personal computer build. So um, with uh, no further ado, let's go over some parts here. So, as you can see, I went with a uh, Maximus Extreme Z790. Um, some of the assembly has been done. Um, this is a EK water block velocity on top of a 13th gen i9. I have some Corsair uh, Dominator Platinum uh, DDR5 in black. Uh, Cable mod extensions, uh, custom cable mod uh, 4090 uh, breakout cable, uh, certainly very useful to deal with those dongles. The 4090 has been blocked uh, with a Vector 2 block as well. Um, I did not go with the active backplate, I went with the passive black backplate, so that way I could keep this OLED screen that covers my primary uh, M.2 drive. Uh, in the build, I'm using three uh, Sabernet Rocket 4 Plus. Um, so we have our uh, primary M.2 slot. Um, there's also more underneath here. And um, you also have the uh, M.2 expansion um, DIM module uh, that expands the storage even further if I need to down the road. Um, so... I'm going to move some of these boxes and then just want to kind of highlight some of the features of this case, which is uh, certainly, in my opinion, one of the best built-in reservoir pump cases that I've seen uh, on the market in a very long time. That's why I'm so excited to do this uh, walkthrough here. So this is the Grazon G20 case. Uh, it took me a long time to get it. Um, but it is finally here. Um, I also went with the Grazon, um, I think it's a D5 pump, um, with an OLED display, uh, touch screen, so you can control, uh, how fast the pump's going. You can also link it to, uh, temperature, so you can, uh, pump the water faster if, for some odd reason, um, you're not getting enough water flow. Um, and that can all be controlled, uh, off of the motherboard's uh, pump output, uh, which is extremely nice. Um, as you can see, big reservoir here goes through the pump, then feeds up to our first outlet, which goes right to our GPU, which I will go over as the build starts. Um, and after that, feeds up to your first radiator uh, in the back, which I'll flip this around in a minute out of your first radiator into your processor. Um, the reason why I like this so much is that means that instead of having to run a parallel loop um, and worry about, uh, you know, a hot GPU then feeding your CPU, you now get a full radiator um, cooling cycle of that fluid before it hits your processor. After the processor, it then goes through two additional radiators in the back, um, and then dumps back into your reservoir. Um, I've done some preliminary testing, and uh, I'm not even using that thick of radiators, and, um, you know, we could easily run this sub-ambient if we, if we wanted to. Um, however, uh, cooling is definitely not going to be an issue, even with the 4090 workhorse and the um, 13th Gen i9. As you can see, the case comes with um, some frames that you mount your radiators to. I went with all Noctua Redux, and I went with uh, Primo Chill uh, 360 rads um, in gunmetal black. Uh, sorry, gunmetal. These are a fantastic um, platform to build on. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier. The only downside is the radiators are stored in an upright position on the back, and it makes draining the computer an absolute uh, nightmare. So let's rotate this around real quick and I'll go over what's in the back. All 
All right, the back of the case. Not looking so pretty right now, however, this is loaded with features that I enjoy. So right now I have some shop cloth inside of these uh, radiator feeds uh, just to prevent water from dripping on my bill. I can get rid of those. So as you can three, uh, see, three spots to mount a radiator here. Uh, right now, the loose cables are just for the uh, PWM fans and um, the RGB uh, coloring uh, that I have disconnected right now. Nice shroud right here off of the power supply. And I've done a pretty good job of fitting all of the extension cables as well as the PSU cables in there. Um, it is adjustable left to right, um, so you can, you know, obviously expand this out more if you needed to. I went with a Be Quiet Dark Power Pro, um, 1500 watts, um, more than enough power than we'll ever need, um, but certainly one of the nicest looking power supplies, as well as the manufacturer Be Quiet. It is a very silent power supply, which is part of what I'm trying to accomplish with this build is a... Um, quiet, good-looking, desk, displayable computer. So I am going to switch over to time-lapse to kind of do some assembly work. Um, originally, I went with the idea up front here where I wanted to try and do some custom bends um, from these two spots to these uh, inlets and outlets. So this is flowing into our inlet here, and then our outlet goes up to our second rad. Um, and I had already built some custom bends here. Um, and, you know, overall, I, I like the looks of them. Obviously, these are mock-ups, uh, so the, the angles are a little off. Um, so I like the look of this. It was, um, extremely hard to bend this, as you can imagine. Um, and overall, I just didn't know if I liked the aesthetic of these bends. I could easily get these more parallel, um, and I overheated this tube, which is why the bend looks a little foggy. All can be fixed, however... I have a large amount of EK fittings, 45s, um, extensions, and I'd like to try and get it where I could use straight pipes of PETG and just use fittings to accomplish uh, the goal of getting the flow correct. So I'm going to switch over to time lapse and uh, we'll see how the build goes.